what if we could ignite great conversations and address financial exclusion, deforestation, homelessness? What if I could answer Sam's questions? What if through good talk we could generate the kind of leaders we need? What if, well, universities need a lot of work, colleges need reinventing. What if we could figure out a way through that? So I want to propose, I want to propose an approach to generating better conversations that can deliver the kind of designs we need for really complex social problems. It blends design thinking and conversations. It can work on campus, it can work in the community. So design, designers bring us beautiful, functional, affordable, great products that, and services that make our lives better. And design thinking takes this creative and intentional approach to addressing really big social problems. So I've been working in, in Kenya trying to help women gain, a, gain access to, to better phone charging solutions. It's design thinkers that have delivered these really great solar products that are durable, functional, affordable, fixable. Stanford's D School, their Institute of Design, has this five point method for design thinking, right? So we empathize with the users. You immerse yourself, get into their experience. You define um, a, a specific and, and meaningful challenge. You ideate and come up with really radical ideas prototype and test out these solutions. Girl Effect mentioned earlier has partnered with Frog Design to co-design with young women in Kenya, empowering digital experiences. Design thinking is coming to Tulane. Byron Mutan and I will be teaching a class this spring, bringing design school techniques, working with students here to address problems in the community. And I'm actually really, really excited about this. And I'm looking forward to this new thinking around age-old problems. But I do wonder whether this new thinking, these creative types, can address problems that generations of development professionals, grassroots activists, Peace Corps volunteers, and Tulane graduates haven't been able to do yet. <clears throat> so design thinking isn't enough. We need better design conversations, conversations that tackle complex problems, problems that don't have a clear technical solutions, problems that have social, economic, environmental, and even value dimensions, like how do we define success? These wicked problems, like the Afghan insurgency represented in the spaghetti, messy, messy spaghetti diagram that was in the New York Times a few years ago and featured in other TED Talks. The problems of urban areas, how do we deliver food, energy, water, transportation, poop management for the billions of people in urban areas around the world? So I've been involved in a lot of conversations about designs, designs about uh, conversations about research, food systems, cell phone charging systems. This is with, with students, with colleagues, with, with partners in the community. And I've come to realize that design thinking techniques can help us to overcome these poorly designed conversations where language and confused signals mean there's no learning, obstructed learning. Because what we really want are great conversations where willing and engaged participants open channels, learn together, construct meaning, and really generate knowledge. Now this can happen by yourself if you're actually listening, or between groups, or in small, mostly in small groups of individuals. So let's put together these small conversation groups and then the principles of design thinking, and we will get better conversations to generate better designs with three steps, convene, deliver, sorry, convene, exchange, and, and give. So bring together a group of, of diverse, open-minded people from different walks of life, into some provocative or neutral setting. It may be a, a, a seminar, but it's not a class. It might be the, the dinner table, but without a TV. It might be over the compost pile or grown at youth farm. So turn off your digital devices, order some food, and pull up a chair. 
because you want to have a real conversation, right? Forget about grades. You prepare, you might bring your design thinking toolkit, but expect the unexpected and live with ambiguity. So some conversation starters. This is a, um, a sign on a, on a bus stop down on Loyola Avenue, and it shows the sign for Bourbon Street underwater. So the caption reads, sea level rise, global war warming, coastal erosion, let's fix it. It says, it's a call to fix it. Let's do disasters better. These are billboards in, in Kenya, that were, which is facing a crisis of leadership, and they're calling for new ways to think about the country. This is one among many billboards. What will Kenya look like in 2030? Here's some questions I've heard lately. What's for supper and why? Do Tom's shoes really promote kids going to school? What should I major in? So the third step is to give it away. You've been learning, and now it's time to give it away and be generous, because you want your good ideas to be acted on, and you can find somebody to travel with. So pitch it at Propeller Nola, post it at this change maker site of Ashoka. Build a community through the Idea Groups platform on campus. Work with community partners like Life City. Now, why? Well, there's two reasons I can think of. One is that we really don't always know what the problem is. We jump too soon with a hammer of our discipline to come in with a solution when we really need to talk about it a lot more. Who knew where the cell phone revolution was going to take North Africa? Who knows where the chats about food access in the Lower Ninth Ward will go? And then, then not everybody can go to design school. Not everybody can afford design teams. We really need more, more do-it-yourself design thinking. So design conversations, because design thinking is not enough. Now, you may not be ready to pitch your idea, but I do invite you to ignite a conversation. Thank you.